Hello and welcome. My name's Ed Hope, a junior doctor in the UK. And on this channel, we like to break down the medical science in TV and film. Today, we're taking a look back at all the James Bond films and pulling out some of the weird injuries, some of the even stranger deaths. I can't breathe. And a little bit of medicine too. So let's crack on with it. When the shark is the least of your worries, we actually find out this James Bond baddie is a balloon because <laughs> that could be the only way he would explode like that. You don't see kind of any blood or tissue and you could just see this layer as it pops. Clearly, you know, that's uh, the special effects at the time. And you do wonder why he didn't just spit out that explosive capsule. What we're seeing here is someone getting damaged from inhaling from a pressurized container, which I have actually seen before. So sometimes people take nitrous oxide. You often see them in those little metal canisters to get a bit of a high. Well, I've seen someone that actually took it from a pressurized container and that pressure went into the lungs, burst the lungs and caused a pneumothorax and all that nitrous oxide gas escaped into the tissues as well, what we call subcutaneous emphysema. When you press down on his sort of arm and neck, you could feel this crunchy sound and that was the air that had escaped in his tissues. Luckily for my chap, he survived and he was able to go about his business partying in a less extreme way. <gasps> <sighs> On a top by name, on a top by nature. Actually, she kills this dude when she's on the bottom. This dude can't breathe from being squeezed around his chest, which is not the best way of stopping someone breathing because you're still gonna get some movement of the diaphragm, the main muscle of breathing. So some air still going in and out of the body. The best way would really be around the neck. So a blood choke to knock out the carotid arteries. That would mean you lose consciousness within seconds. But maybe the compression around the neck is gonna leave more evidence and that's why she's done it this way. Having said that, this is held for a long amount of time and it's stopping your chest expansion and we're compounded by our physical exertion after his sexual endeavors. This could be akin to a type of crush. So what you'd see in kind of crowd injuries and you can stop breathing that way. And the obvious thing to mention as well that we could have rib injuries, damage to the lung down below, which would also complicate things. There's a little bit of medical science behind that. Bond realizes he's being poisoned, so makes his own gastric lavage. So swallowing a high concentration of salt water to try and irritate the stomach, to make himself vomit, to bring up the poison before it's absorbed. This is the type of thing you would have seen 30 to 50 years ago in hospital for overdoses. And if done quickly here, there may be some benefit, however, do not ever try this at home. Even in the controlled environment in hospital would be sucking out the solution, not relying on people to vomit because there's just too many risks and that's why we don't do it anymore. For example, if 
the patient begins to lose consciousness like we see James Bond doing here. If he's vomiting with a reduced level of consciousness, that vomit could go into the lungs, what we call an aspiration. And if he doesn't vomit, all that salt water is gonna stay in the body, which can be dangerous too. And the benefits are very unpredictable. So a lot of the poison might have already be absorbed in the stomach. I've already done a breakdown of the defibrillator scene. In fact, defibrillator scene from a bunch of movies, which I'll leave a link to up there. But they've done a great job here, particularly in picking the drug Digitalis, which can have the effect on the heart as shown. Well, at least this dude has got some blood in him, <laughs> unlike in the first clip. This type of injury we call an explosive decompression injury for obvious reasons. As more and more air is forced into the container here, it's gonna increase in density. So we're essentially breathing in more and more air particles, and these are gonna be distributed in your lungs, blood, and all through the tissues in your body. So as soon as this pressure is released, all of these gases expand and essentially bubble out into your tissues causing this effect. Well, <laughs> probably not exactly this effect. This is probably <laughs> on the extreme end of the spectrum. Decompression injuries, we usually think of divers when they've come up to the surface too quickly and they get the bends. So these bubbles of air coming out in their joints and tissue. But when we're dealing with such huge pressures as we see here, the air in our lungs hasn't got time to escape through our windpipe. So we actually have damage to our lungs, what we call barotrauma, and that's when we call it explosive decompression. So we're gonna get burst lungs and we're gonna get this subcutaneous emphysema that we mentioned in the first clip. So air escaping into the tissues around the lungs. Given massive pressures involved, it could be fatal this quickly, but whether it would look like this, like a complete explosion, I don't know. Jill? I don't think James Bond is first aid trained here. And you see this a lot in movies. You need to confirm the person is actually dead. So he should go up to them, check for a pulse, and if not, get help and start CPR. It might be confusing what she's actually died of here, but Bond later reports that she died of skin asphyxiation. So not having enough oxygen in your body due to being covered in paint. If that sounds weird to you, <laughs> You're absolutely right. If it was true, you'd wonder why divers or just swimmers haven't died from this before. And that's because, of course, it doesn't exist. But back in the 1960s, when this was filmed, this was a common belief. And it sort of sounds a bit mad that they thought that a significant part of the respiratory system was made up of your skin. Although what could cause your problem is some of the toxins in paint, although Things in paint would not necessarily be this readily absorbed through the skin to cause you a problem, although Goldfinger may have added a poison in there. Five and seven of spades. A straight flush. Four to the eight. A high hand. Called hemolacria, literally blood in the tears. This is a super rare thing. We wouldn't have learn about it in medical school, but new onset, you'd think of inflammation or an infection or even damage to the blood vessel or a tumor too. In this case here, clearly as a result of trauma given that scar, and you'd really would have expected this to heal by now, but I'm sure this case report somewhere of people having hemolacria long-term. As much as I commend James Bond for having illnesses that could possibly exist, they don't do a lot for the stigma of physical health conditions with bad guys that have facial scars, prosthetic limbs, acromegaly, and even ones that bleed from their eyes. So there you have it, a bit of a breakdown and my thoughts on some of the medical science from the James Bond films. I'm super looking forward to No Time To Die, maybe 
there'll be some medical science in that to talk about. But if there's any other films or TV shows you want me to look at, then leave a comment down below. And as always, thanks again for all your support on the channel. If you have enjoyed this video, please give it a like and consider subscribing too. And until next time, I'll see you soon.